Hey everybody, it's Abby. Sorry for the lighting there a minute. Kind of had to adjust. Um, uh, this is Turn and Flee Section 1, and it is on sexual immorality, purity, waiting, all that kind of stuff. And so um, I'm going to read some verses. It's um, 1 Corinthians 6, 12 through 20, and it's actually, the section's actually labeled Flee from Sexual Immorality. So hang in, I'm not very good at reading, so hang in there with me as I read it out, okay? All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and for the stomach food. And the stomach for food, sorry. And God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant for, not meant for sexuality, sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised members of Christ. Shall I then take members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never! Or do you know, not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes joined to the becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two will become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every against his own, every other sin a person commits is outside the, outside the body. But the sexual immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? Sorry. You are not your own, for, the, for you were bought with a price, so glorify God with your body. Okay, so after reading that, um, I mean, what is sexual immorality? Sexual immorality is very common nowadays. It's sex outside of marriage, adultery, and all of that stuff, kind of stuff, you know, lust, all that falls into that section. And we see sort of a definition in Matthew 5:28, but uh, it says, "But I tell you, that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart." So this uh, verse, I believe, kind of talks to men and women, even though it directly kind of talks to men about looking at women lustfully. But um, and I mean, I'm a teenage girl, so I understand like there's the crushes and. There's a, I think it seems like we're always flirting, like unintentionally almost though. <laughs> and I mean, seriously, we're, none of us are by any means perfect, and we know that. I mean, any follower of Christ knows that, you know, there's only one perfect, and that is God, Jesus, uh, same person. So, um, anyways, all that being said, purity and waiting for love and sex is important. In our world, purity isn't as common as it was, um, but it is God's way, and that is the best way. Um, if more people would get in a relationship with God before man or woman, um, we wouldn't have so many abortions and teen, teen parents and children in foster homes and um, kids being abused and people like that. I believe that whenever a child is born to two parents who are married, that they come from a better home. Most, I mean, obviously there might some kids might come from a good home even if they're not their parents aren't married, but still the best way so uh, it is very important for God to be there if you have a relationship with God I believe in due time he will lead you to the person you are to love and uh, eventually marry and he she will be enough because faith in God is rewarded that's kind of what I've been teaching my devotional on Instagram and so uh, a few verses for you guys the first one is um, that kind of proves all this. Second Corinthians uh, 12, 21. Let me get there a minute. Um, it says, 12, 21, let me find it. I fear that when I come again, my God may humble me before you. I may not more over many of those who sinned earlier and have not repented for the, the impurity, sexual immorality, and sensuality they have practiced. And um, this tells us that if we commit sexual immorality, we need to repent for the for that because it's sin and we, we are to repent for our sins. That's in the Bible a few times, I believe. And uh, then the next one, I have three more after this one, so it's real easy. This next one is 1 Corinthians 3, 16 through... I lost my marker. <laughs> it's 1 Corinthians 3, 16 through 17. A ton of markers, I'm sorry. Um, do you not know that you are God's temple? That God's spirit dwells in you. If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. So 
we need to govern our bodies. And I mean, um, our bodies really are temples, and we aren't to violate them, for there will be punishment in that, and we need to be careful and just modestly and not open ourselves up to everybody, you know, no, girls don't show your chest, guys, pull up your pants, please, that's kind of one thing, they're sagging, a lot of people here sag, I don't know, that's weird, I find it nasty, but, uh, Hebrews 9, 12, um, 12. He entered once and for all in holy places by the means of, no, that is not it, I promise. That's, wow, oh, nope, it is, by means of his own blood, thus securing an internal redemption. Um, we can be redeemed for all this, these sins through God, I mean, God died, for, I mean, Jesus, God, same person, that he died for us on the cross, and we can't deny that, it's true, and I mean, he took our place. I know that's very elementary, I think. And so, um, he's saying, you know, we are a team through an eternal redemption and um, because of his blood that he shed. And, you know, you take communion, and at least I do, and uh, it's the grape juice or the wine, whatever you use, is supposed to be the blood of God that he, from the first supper, or last supper, last supper, sorry. That's ever, and so, yeah. One more verse, uh, 1 Peter 2, 1. It says, um, So put away all the malice and deceit and hypocrisy and envy, all slander. Um, so it tells us simply to put it all away. Just, you know, don't be really mean and very, don't open yourself up, as I said before. Be very cautious and just put it all away and get right with God first. It's important. You need to have God there before you go anywhere else with it. Your life needs God and um, relationships need God and a lot of different things. That's the best way to have a relationship is with God. So that is Turn and Flee section one. I hope you guys like it. I hope this video turns out okay. The lighting's kind of bad. I'm sorry. Um, I will be posting section two hopefully soon. It is about Oh, well, I'm not going to tell you. You'll have to watch the next one and find out. So, I hope you guys like it. Uh, subscribe, like, whatever you want. Follow me on Instagram. Insta pray. Both stuff will be almighty. Uh, kick. Kick. Is that okay? Two underscores between the words. So, I hope you guys like this video. Let me know what you think on here or comment on anything. Message me. If you have any disagreements or anything like that, message me. I'd like to know what you think. So, bye guys.